of 66 books where we use the Bible as a framework to discuss how to level up our lives using Israelite spirituality. For today's episode, I do want to switch gears just a little bit to talk a little bit about individual development. I talked about how this season's theme was going to be based off of community and while I do want to continue to explore the different ways that we as Israelites come together already, the ways that we could come together better to build for this nation, um, you know, we are little bits and pieces of people that come together to create the whole and so I do think it's important to still talk about some self-reflection and the importance of just assessing our own strengths and weaknesses to make sure that we are contributing to the whole this nation in the best way possible and so with that said today's topic is going to be on how to bounce back from burnout and failure this is something that i am actively working through like literally to this day, getting advice from my family members and loved ones on how to live a more balanced life. It's something that I struggle with. And I think even as a smaller nation with a goal to rebuild our nation to its former glory and beyond, it can get really overwhelming thinking about all the different things, the different projects, the different ways we want to increase ourselves for the betterment of us today and also the future. And so I do think it's important to sit back and discuss the importance of rest in an Israelite's life because our father, the great God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, understands the importance of rest. You know, it talks about how, you know, in Genesis on that seventh day, it was a day of rest. And from then on, we've had the Sabbath day of rest, the seventh day of each month to rest and re-energize and replenish our spirit as well so you know rest is built into israelite culture it's a part of israelite culture and so i think it's really important for us to just take some time to sit back and really understand what it takes to regain our strength when we're in those moments of being burnt out or experiencing failure in our lives and also what's at risk of being lost when we do not take the time to rest in the way that our bodies and our spirits need. So I know we're going to be in the book of Isaiah for today, but before we jump into it, I do just want to briefly take a little stop at Leviticus 25 because this scripture, again, we're just going back to like planting. I think it's such a good framework to understand our own lives. And so what I love about this verse, which I'll share on the screen, is Leviticus 25, verse 3 to 5, talks about, you know, the God of Israel basically explaining, you know, for six years, you will sow the land, you will prune the vineyard, but then on the seventh year, you're going to give the land a Sabbath year of rest. So you will not take from the land, you will allow the land to recover, improve its quality, and essentially re-energize and replenish its nutrients for itself. And what I love about this scripture is it not only highlights the wisdom of our God, but it highlights a point that I've thought about a lot recently going through this burnout period in my life, which is that rest is replenishing. Rest is re-energizing. And I know that sounds really intuitive. You're probably like, Rachel, well, duh. But for me, and I'm, ir- I'm interested to see if anyone else has related to this. I think growing up, whenever I thought about rest, I always thought about it in the sense of sleeping. And I thought about sleeping as this idea that you're just staying still. You're not doing anything. You're just, you're just chilling. You're just chilling. It's quiet and it's still. And I think that framework of thinking is actually really limiting because there are many different ways that we can rest if we think about rest as being re-energizing our spirit, re-energizing ourselves so that we can get back to equilibrium. I say this because when I was in college, again, 
love listening to podcasts. I used to love the Girl Boss podcast. I think they ended up changing hosts and I kind of fell off after that. But I remember the Girl Boss podcast had a famous makeup artist, Michelle Fawn, who I my whole like middle school experience i used to watch her videos all the time like i I used to love her down bad okay but she was talking about her journey becoming an entrepreneur and she talked about the importance of rest and something that was really eye-opening to me is she was like you know rest happens in a lot of ways for some people rest is very active for them a restful day is going outside on a walk Um, maybe going to an exercising class, journaling, gardening, like really taking the time to do the things they desire and that's how they get re-energized. For some people, I know like me in high school after I'd have a big test, rest is literally just laying up in your bed, watching Netflix and chilling. You're sitting down, you're quiet, like that's how I've always thought about it. You're doing nothing because you've been so busy doing so much, you just want to sit still. Um, but when I think about rest happening in different ways, I, I, it, it allows me to kind of open up the question of, okay, Rachel, like how do you go about re-energizing your spirit? How do you go about re-energizing yourself in the most successful way to get back to your normal state so that you can continue to do the things that you need to do and show up for yourselves and others in this nation, at work, being a a family member and for yourself. And so through that questioning, I was able to understand the different ways and strategies that I find rest and that I replenish myself. And it's so funny because even as I'm saying this right now, I'm realizing that lately I have not been doing those things. (laughs) And maybe that's why I've been so tired and exhausted is because I've been neglecting the things that I find rest in and I've just been pushing myself to go for me personally I find rest when I pray in the morning I find rest in journaling like just getting all of my thoughts out and kind of processing my emotions and essentially brainstorming next steps from there and I again I haven't been doing that recently and I even find rest like going outside on walks like something about nature is so re-energizing for me and you know I'm at a point in my life where knowing these methods has been really helpful for me because typically when I'm in those ruts or I experience setbacks or I have a creative block I know the exact things to fall back on so that I can get back to where I need like even for 66 books episode if I'm experiencing a block and I don't know what the episode is going to be about I'm like Let's go on a walk, let's go outside, bring your little notepad or your phone and let's type And As soon as I start going in that walk, like five minutes in, it starts to come to me. So I think it's really important for us to ask ourselves those questions like how do you re-energize our spirit? And not only lean onto it, but my first takeaway for dealing with like burnout and failure, which I need to do like literally after I end out this episode, is to reprioritize. I think it's really important when you have a lot of things going on in your life and you're starting to feel depleted is that you've got to prioritize those things that re-energize yourself and that includes your spirituality. And what's interesting is I started this process but I kind of fell off and in this new Israelite month I have definitely made it a priority to try to get on track with it. And my goal is to really just sit down, write out all the different projects, things that are happening at work. For you, it could even be like sometimes even people that are kind of like depleting that energy and decide, okay, hey, I need to take a, I can take a pause on maybe these four things and keep these two things running in the background. And while all this is happening, I'm going to start prioritizing myself. I'm going to start prioritizing my spirituality. Like, let's get on a prayer program this month. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the the scriptures to get connected. I know that is helping me so much. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but Isaiah, which is what we're going to dig into this episode, has been helping me so much in terms of just feeling 
comforted and empowered and it's been really integral to reminding me about the great power of the God of Israel and so I think taking that first step to just kind of write down all the things that are going on in your life really honing in on what's depleting you and seeing what can be put on pause for now or maybe even pruned indefinitely to shift the focus back inwardly into your spirit and to really rest is a really great solution to dealing with burnt out and coming back from failures even as well. And so I want to go ahead and segue into Isaiah 40. We're going to start off from verse 27 to really examine why it's so important and so powerful to tap into our God when we're feeling faint, weary, meek, um, burnt out essentially. So we're gonna go ahead and flip into that to discuss why it's so important. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. The reason why I love this scripture is because it really reminds us of the power of the God of Israel. And it reminds me of something that has just been in my head time and time again is why are you struggling to figure things out on your own when you could go to the creator of heaven and earth? Like the scripture literally talks about how the creator, the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. Like God of Israel is not tired. He's not weary. So why not tap into our source for that strength? It reminds me of how powerful it is that we have access to the great God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I say that because, you know, there was one Saturday message that I believe Elder Anvil spoke about um, when the Spirit of God was in the midst of them in Egypt. And it talked about how there was not a feeble one among them. Like, do you not understand how mind-blowing that is? Like, out of all of those people, that multitude, there was not a feeble one among them. That is the Spirit. That is the Spirit giving us strength to do what we have to do. And I think we've even experienced it in our own lives. I think of Day of Atonement. It's a time of rest. You know, we forfeit food to focus on the spiritual food that we can feed our spirits to allow us to connect with our Father and repent for our sins. And it's so interesting, like, when you're fasting, I think for me, like, the beginning can be a little bit tough, but there's a moment when you're fasting, and for me, it's when you're singing. When you're singing with everyone, you start to, like, get into the feeling, and you start to feel energized, like, you've gone the whole day without food or water, but somehow there's, like, a pep in your step, and you're feeling good, like, that is the access that we have. That is the power source that we have access to as Israelites and so I think it's really important for takeaway two when we're feeling burnt out is to tap into the routines that allow you to connect with your God. Um, recently I've been reading like probably my favorite book that I've read so far this year. I have a number that I'm trying to reach this year and you know, I love this book so much. It has such good tips. It's a really good book to read um, just for personal development, period, even though it's about leadership. But I think I've mentioned this before. I love the Harvard Business Review series. I think I was at an airport with my mom one time. I think we were going to Columbia and we were in the bookstore and she found one of them and started reading it and was sharing what she was found. I was like, these are really good. And so as you can see, I'm obsessed. I think this is my fourth one in the Emotional Intelligence series. And the Authentic Leadership book is so, so good. Like, 
so good that the pages are literally falling out my book because I've been taking so many notes. But something that stood out to me is it was talking about leadership. And it said something that was kind of like, dang, it was like, in leadership, the struggle is constant. The trade-offs do not get easier as you get older. So I was like, okay, you know, the problems are not going to be easier <laughs> as you get older, noted. But what it does said, and I'm, I'm reading it here, it says, you know, the question is not whether or not we can avoid stress, but it's how do we go about controlling it to maintain our own sense of equilibrium. And it talks about that authentic leaders, leaders that are successful in being authentic, are aware of the importance of staying grounded and they don't just stay grounded by you know tapping into their support systems like their friends and family but authentic leaders get physical exercise engage in spiritual practices do a community service and it says they return to the places where they grew up because this allows them to enable their authenticity and that was really powerful to me you know tapping into those replenishing routines the israelite culture your spirituality is key to dealing with the stressors of life and even when i read those things i'm like that's israelite culture through and through like the community service aspect like i'm gonna be like very honest and i think i've mentioned this before <laughs> you guys are getting all the tea from me today but something i'm actively you know working on is okay a confession <laughs> is I I don't necessarily always love decorating for feast okay and it's not that I don't love it I'm just someone like I, I just want to get in know what I'm doing and be successful I just want decorating for feast to be very time efficient and so for me I'm like tell me what to do and I will do it I will be here but I'm not the person that wants to like be dancing to the playlist like while we're getting ready I want to get in get the work done and let's party despite those feelings I will say like when you have feast and you see the person that's giving thanks and offerings to the God of Israel and the community like it's very touching like those moments you kind of hold on to those moments of positivity and they remind you okay like this is why we do what we do like this is why the stress is worth it or this is why you know putting yourself outside of your comfort zone to achieve what you need to do is worth it and so I think staying tapped into Israelite culture is an excellent way to, you know, negate the stress that comes in our lives because it is very fulfilling to be a part of a community and to contribute to the community and to see how it impacts others and to create those bonds and to stay tapped into your spiritual routines, which the God of Israel thankfully has blessed us already enough with our new moons, our Sabbaths, just the culture in itself is a routine that keeps us rooted in this doctrine and connected to him. And so I think taking time to tap into the source is a really excellent strategy to, you know, negating the difficulties that we experience in this life. And so I want to transition into my next scripture to talk about the importance of seeking after our God in those times where we are weary. It makes me think about the importance of, you know, just thirsting after our God. I think about Psalm 63 where it's like, God, my, my soul thirsteth after thee. I think this next scripture will really highlight that. So I want to go ahead and transition to Isaiah 41 and we're going to start with verse 1 and then jump down to 17. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the siddha tree, and the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together. 
that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. I think the reason why this scripture resonates with me so much is because it reminds me that whatever our needs are, whatever we desire, the God of Israel is willing to provide. Like I'll never forget my mom, I think she did a Saturday message, Elder Donna pulled out the scripture, you know, open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Like let your voice be heard so your father can supply because he wants us to succeed. He wants to see us be successful. He wants us to thirst after him. Um, And what it also reminds me of though is like what is at risk of being lost when we don't take the time to rest you know what opportunities and blessings the god of israel presents to us that we are at risk of jeopardizing or losing when we're not taking the time to replenish ourselves and i know i have my own personal experience unfortunately with failure that happened a few months ago um just as a quick overview um essentially a nonprofit organization reached out because they were recruiting for guest speakers to speak organization this organization is basically focused at um, introducing black girls to tech and so there was an opportunity for a speaking engagement i was so so excited i love working with youth even just volunteering through my job and on my own time i just like working with youth i think they're energizing and replenishing to myself Um, So I was really excited about this opportunity, but one thing I did notice from the front is that, you know, the organization did seem a little disorganized. Like I remember for my first interest meeting, there was a set time and I was like ready. I was dressed ready to go to have the meeting and then suddenly it was pushed back multiple times, like I think maybe 20, 30 minutes before the meeting. So I was like, okay, like we just got to be patient with them. Like I know the struggles of you know, dealing with the nonprofit sometimes as well. But, you know, I noticed a sense of disorganization with the organization and having been at a time in my life where there was just also a lot going on in terms of my own personal life, work, you know, there was an opportunity for more like leadership roles and opportunities that I was stepping into. I was very overwhelmed. And I think I made the mistake of saying like, okay, they're kind of lax, they're kind of slack with the way that they run things, so I can be slack as well. And so I remember after that meeting, she was, we were like kind of brainstorming what the speaking engagement would look like. And she was like, you know, just circle back in the next few days, let me know, and we can go from there. And so instead of pushing myself to circle back the next day, I waited a couple of days to really kind of formulate the proposal that I wanted to. And I sent it to them. And then they responded a couple of days later and they're like, we've had a lot of interest. The speaking slot just closed. I'm so sorry, like you will not be able to do it. And I remember I was just so down about it afterwards. And it it took a moment for me to reflect and just kind of hold accountability for the process. You know, although I was overwhelmed and I was just trying to prioritize work and other things in addition to this like I feel like I dropped the ball and I dropped the ball because I I think I wasn't prioritizing correctly and I wasn't making sure that I was getting the rest that I needed to show up as my best self with each opportunity and so um, that was a learning opportunity for me I think it's sometimes better to learn these opportunities early on as opposed to maybe later on in life when maybe there's more weight to the loss but you know, I think it's really important for us to remember like rest helps us be the best that we can be, not only for ourselves, but for others and for our God. And so that is definitely a takeaway that I want to cement now. Like it's not just important for the sake of your health, your spiritual health and your physical health. But when we talk about accountability, when we talk about the fact that our generation is on the line our future generations are on the line when it comes to the actions that we do to either build this nation or destroy it which we don't want to do we have to make sure that we are hitting all the things that we need to do to make sure that we're 
giving our best to our God as well. And you know, even thinking about that experience, something that comes to mind, which I would say is my third takeaway when you're dealing with moments of failure and burnout, out, is to tap into your support system. I know for me, going through that disappointment, like talking with brethren, really allowed me to kind of not only hold accountability, but also strategize like, okay, what are the lessons that can be learned from this? Again, every W not win is a L a lesson learned. And and what can I implement into my life to ensure that these things don't happen again? And so I think it's important. And again, like God of Israel is so smart, so beautiful. Like he built a family and us being a part of this family, we have other family members that we can depend on. Like we don't have to go searching for a support system like within the nation we have support here and so i think it is important to make sure that you you know you're talking to your brother and asking them for advice giving them advice i can't tell you how many aunties just randomly have sent me messages and at the end of the message they'd be like just make sure you're taking care of yourself though and i'm like how did you know that i'm literally struggling with this like we didn't even talk about how stressed i am you're right I should be listening to you but I'm not so hopefully I will soon like make sure you're reaching out to people you know allow them to reach out to you even recognizing that the God of Israel is our support system like I think about you know the scripture talks about you know the Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge say law like the God of Israel is rooting for you he's rooting for you Like, the heavenly government wants to see us succeed. And I think that's really powerful because it reminds me that there's more with us than there are for them. We just can't see them. Yeah, like, let's hold on to the fact that the seen and unseen within Israel are on our side and are here to support us so that we can be successful in this life. So let's tap into that. Let's tap into our spirituality, figure out what spiritual routines replenish us, whether it's singing, prayer, writing testimonies within your journal so that you can go back and be empowered by the greatness of our God. Like, let's tap into that so that we as individuals can make sure we're well rested, that we're in harmony with our body, our our soul and our spirit, so that we can provide the talents, the resources, the dreams, the visions, the work, the labor, and the rest that is required to be a nation that our God deserves. I want to thank you guys so much for being with me throughout this episode. Um, It was it was interesting because this episode has kind of been like a learning journey for me. Like as we've gone through it, I'm learning about a a lot of things that I need to kind of do after I close out here today. So I also want to get insight from you as well. Like what are the things that replenish you? What are quotes or things that you like to remember to take care of yourself so that we can be the best that we can be for our God? Um, I want to thank you guys again for all the support that you consistently show um, to 66 Books and This Nation. I want to thank Luncy Smith for the donation that was um, given for the last episode. Any support that goes to this nation is so received and so appreciated. Um, And again, thinking back into this idea of supporting our nation and making sure that we can be the best that we can be to build for our God please make sure that you're tuning in to all the programming that happens on this channel. You know it, every Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, we have Friday night message. And every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern, we have Saturday messages as well. Um, I think you guys are going to like some of the upcoming ones as well. The ones previous have always been such good spiritual meat to feed on and to replenish our spirits as we go about day to day in this world. Um, But I thank you guys so much for listening and I look forward to hearing your thoughts and your comments about this topic soon. And with that said, I bid you peace.